On this episode of Lumifa Classic, I'll show you how you service your V12 distributor. Welcome back to Lumifa Classic. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. I highly recommend that you stick around and subscribe. I put new videos every week on a white XJ12 you see behind me right there an XGS convertible V12, and an S-Type project car that I'm starting to restore right now. Uh, you can go to my profile down below and check out almost 40 videos on these cars. And while you're down there, hit the subscribe button and the bell notifications so you don't miss any updates. Last week, we went through how to set the ignition timing on a V12 Jag. I did mention in that video that we were gonna go through the advanced weights, and that's what we're doing right now. Because in a lot of cases, those advanced weights will be ceased, it is part of regular maintenance to put some oil under the rotor on a little sponge that will lubricate these. But when was that done last on any of these cars, really? So they will most likely be seized, especially if you have an HE engine. They will probably most definitely be seized unless someone has gone through them in the past. So let's head on over to the car. I'll show you how to take the distributor out because it's best to use on the bench, how to go through everything in the distributor, how to unseize those weights and get them to work correctly for many years. On the Jag V12, the distributor is all the way down here in the middle between the two banks. As you can see, it's pretty tight down there. So if you want to do any type of major service work or restoration, I highly recommend that you pull the distributor out and you do any of this work on the bench. So the first step is to remove the HT leads, all 12 of them and the distributor cap. What I like to do is first remove this lead. It's the lead for 1A. So remove that one, grab a piece of tape, like masking tape, and put it over the post on the distributor cap for 1A. That just makes it a lot easier when you have to put the caps back again, uh, or I mean the leads back again. You don't need to mark every single lead because you can easily see which cylinder they go to. You just need to know where number one is then you'll know where to start when you put it all back. So now I'm just gonna pull these leads off, take the distributor cap off, and move things out of the way so I can show you how to take that distributor out. I have prepared some things to get the distributor out. Some of these are specific to the pre-HE, so if you have the HE, you can ignore these. On the pre-HE, you need to set the timing, or set the engine to top dead center on cylinder one. There's a marking here on the disc. That's just because otherwise the holes and the disc don't line up so you can get a wrench down there to get those allen bolts out. That's the only reason. If you have an HE, you can just note where uh, the rotor is pointing and put the distributor back in the same place. Just make a mark where it's pointing because it will be really obvious if you put it in wrong because it's toothed so it will be pointing in quite a different direction so you don't need to set it on top dead center but on a pre-HE you do. On a pre-HE, you also need to disconnect a few other things. Uh, you need to disconnect the trigger for the ignition. It's a cable over here. That's been disconnected. You also need to disconnect the trigger board wiring, which is over down there. I've disconnected that as well. And then you can make a note of where the rotor is pointing and remove that. Don't forget to disconnect the vacuum hose that goes to the vacuum advanced capsule. Now grab a 3 16 inch Allen wrench and you're gonna loosen the three Allen head screws the holes the distributor down. If they are a little tight, you can use a wrench just to have a little bit more leverage to get them out. Once you've loosened those three Allen screws all the way, you'll feel that the distributor is completely loose. Make sure that all the cables that you disconnected are loose if they're pressing on a pre-HE. Then if you want, you can put the rotor arm back just gently on there. That way when you pull the distributor out, you can see which way it rotates so you know which way it has to be pointing when you put it down because it will rotate when it gets put down into the hole and the gear engages. So now you can simply, as you see, it rotated clockwise a little bit. And now you can just take the distributor out completely. With the distributor removed, you now have a hole exposing the inside of your engine. You don't want to drop anything inside there or get any dirt in there. So while you're working on your distributor, get a clean rag that's not used and just gently 
put it into the hole like so and you can leave that there that makes sure that you don't drop anything into the hole and that no dirt or debris gets into your engine there's one bit i forgot to mention while the distributor is out of the car it is vital that the engine does not turn over at all so you can either disconnect the battery or what i like to do just remove the battery completely that makes sure that nothing can happen that the engine can't turn over at all by mistake and now i have the distributor out of the car I just clamped it down in my vise gently with a clean rag around it. I also removed the trigger board that was here for the fuel injection system on these early d -Dictronics. I also removed the trigger wheel for the open ignition system just to make things a little clearer and easier to demonstrate. So now I'm going to show you how you can feel that your weights are seized or not. The advanced weights that are down here. So with my left hand I'm going to grab the gear at the bottom of the distributor and hold it still as if it were in the car take the rotor and try and spin it counterclockwise it will start to flex back or spin back like so if it does that and it goes back smoothly your weights are fine there should be nothing wrong with them on the uh, HEs you should be able to spin it back about 11 degrees and it's about 13 degrees or so on these earlier pre HEs so if it sounds like this and spinning back in this way then your weights should be fine. If it's completely stiff and you can't move it back or it moves back very slowly then your weights are seized or seizing and you need to instantly take it apart, have a look inside, clean it up and lubricate it again. So now I'm going to show you how to take everything apart here, split the distributor in half so you can see the weights down there and how you clean them up and lubricate them properly. If you have an HE distributor, things will look a little differently up here on top, but it will look pretty much the same beneath. So you can still follow along, even though I'm showing it on a pre-HE. On the HE, you won't have this wheel. You'll have a little star wheel in here instead, but it gets removed in a similar way. This just had a locking ring on it and a washer, and I can gently pull it up. Be really careful not to crack these because they are kind of difficult to get hold of. Uh, sometimes you have to buy a whole ignition kit to get new ones. Uh, at least that's what I found, so be careful with these. Then you need to disconnect this here, which is for the vacuum advance. You can just sort of pull that to the side. Then there's a clip here that holds this whole plastic bit in place with the trigger or the sensor for the um, ignition system. So you can take a screwdriver in here, just bend this back and up a little bit. You can take that clip out. Then this whole assembly slides over and you can lift it free off the distributor like so. Now grab a screwdriver and completely remove the three screws here with the springs. These are used to um, set the timing also on the distributor because when you set the timing here, you can't move it that many degrees. So if you can't get it down or up to the correct uh, timing that you want, you need to uh, strip the distributor down and you can move these and then you can set the timing a bit more. So you should note where they were set before. So mine are basically in the middle. So that's where I'm going to put them back. So I'll just remove these three screws now. With those three screws removed, you'll be able to lift off the top of the distributor. And you can just set that to the side. So here's what we were looking for. Here are the advanced weights. There are two of them over here. Here are the two springs. So when this is spinning really quickly, these will start to move out. And this will move this part over here and it will change your timing. So that's the advanced that you can see the advanced curve, the mechanical advanced curve. Then there's also one with the vacuum one. But this is the mechanical part. And this is what can stick. So if this sticks, that will cause uh, overheating. Your car won't run right. It will feel like it's low on power. And it's just not a good thing. Even though these are working fine, you can still see it's a little dirty around here. So I am going to clean up everything around here. It should be really nice and clean in here. These are the Allen screws that holds it back into the car and onto the engine. So now I'm just going to clean everything up a bit. And then I'll show you how you can grease these up. And also what you can do if they're completely seized. Now does that look a lot better when it's clean? No dirt here, no old oil or anything. A lot nicer. You should always put things back on the car clean. If 
you look up here, you might see a little sponge. And that's actually part of the regular maintenance on these cars. So when your car gets taken into service for an oil change and everything, the technician is actually supposed to take off your distributor cap, take off the rotor, and put a few drops of clean engine oil down on the sponge. And that's supposed to run down this shaft and continue to lubricate this. But of course that has not been done in most of these cars since they were maybe five years old, if it was even done then, because it's a big hassle getting this off to do this. But if that, that hasn't happened, then these might seize. So if you cleaned off all of this and it is seized, you might have to take it all apart. Under here, you can remove that sponge, just lift it up. There is a screw there. If you unscrew that, you can lift off the shaft, you take off the springs, and you can take this all apart. It's quite a hassle, and that screw is often really difficult to get out. So if it is kind of semi-seized, or if you're lucky to get it unseized by just cleaning it, you can lubricate it with everything in place. So that's what I'm going to do now, because I've cleaned off all of this. And I'm going to show you where you can put some grease, and that will lubricate this for many years. I have some grease here at the end of a screwdriver. So basically you want the weights to be able to move out smoothly. So I'm going to put a little bit there. Not too much. A little bit there as well. If you have too much grease, it's just going to get flung out onto the sides and it's going to make everything dirty again. You can put a little bit of grease on the springs as well. Just a little bit. It's not going to hurt anything. Right. When you've put grease everywhere, you can try and work out the mechanism a bit. Just move everything around a bit and try and work that grease in there. If you still feel that it's stiff and sticking after you've done this, you need to clean it more and get all that old dirt out. So try and get the weights out like this. And then with a little screwdriver, you can just push in the grease down here into the middle. And now everything is running really smoothly, moving very nicely with that grease. So just basically continue putting small amounts of grease in here until everything moves really nicely. Once you're happy with that, grab a clean rag and just remove any of the grease that you think doesn't get flung away. Just basically where you have too much of it. Just remove a little bit of that. And now, you have a greased mechanism. When you put everything back in the car, put a few drops of oil on this sponge. That will continue the lubrication process and this should work perfectly. Now, just put everything back together and don't forget the Allen screws that go here. Once you've put it all back together, you need to put the distributor back into the car. Just make sure to line up that rotor arm correctly and everything should be fine. When it's all connected back up, you do need to set ignition timing or at least verify that it hasn't changed. But don't worry, I've already made a video on setting ignition timing on these V12s. I'll put a link to it up above. I'll also put a link down below so you can check that out you need to set the ignition timing again. Under the distributor where it mounts to the engine, there's also a small O-ring or gasket. So when you have it off, just have a look at that, see how it looks. If it's all dried up, get a new one. This is a good time to eliminate a possible oil leak there in the future. But anyways, that's it. That's how you go through your distributor. Make sure everything's working well. And that's a really vital thing on these V12s. Like I said, you don't want them to overheat. You don't want to be low on power. I mean, these are powerful engines and powerful cars. You want to use all that power and you want them to run just right. So when you've gone through all this, then you need to remember as part of your regular maintenance to put some drops of oil on that little sponge so it won't seize in the future. Anyways, if you like this video, please hit that like button, share it with your friends. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. I put new videos every week on Jaguar related content on the XJ12, the XJS, and the S-Type project car. But until next time, I'm Adam, and this was Love with a Classic. I'll see you soon.